feel like Bob Ross. Like, I'm just like, oh, there's no mistakes. There's just happy accidents in my junk painting. Good morning. It is day one of secondhand September and it's actually the end of September. <laughs> so it's the 27th of September. Did I get on with it? Did I do it in time? No. I was working on other client commissions, so that's why I've left it till the absolute last minute to do something for secondhand September. But I'm ready. I'm raring to go. This is just an old Jack Wills jumper that I found in Red Cross. There's no Oxfam near me, or I would have gone to Oxfam because obviously it's an Oxfam challenge, but you know, we take what we can get. I'm gonna make loads of sketches this morning and like pick which ones I like and stuff. I also think I'm gonna work in two colors. So I'm probably gonna do one color in embroidery and then one color in dyeing. And I'm, I wanna try and like paint with the dye on top of this. I don't know how this is gonna go. I need to do like a test panel. I'll get back to you, I guess, when I've got some sketches together. Pray for me. I've been doing some colour tests in my sketchbook and I think the current plan is I have some pink dye um, that is left over it like dyes up yarn like this it's like acid dye so I'm thinking I use that and I want to like paint onto the jumper like certain parts of it and then embroider on top of it with like this kind of bluey colour so it'll be a bit lighter than this because I don't think it'll be um, quite so intense but yeah i thought that would look really cool and i've not seen anyone do that before probably because it's not going to work and i've also been thinking about like what i kind of want to put on it what i want to i because i'm thinking i'm going to do some like illustrations and then from the illustrations i'll then put those onto the jumper in like different places and i think I want to do the illustrate. sorry this lighting is terrible and I think I want to do the illustrations based on things you find in a charity shop so I've got like little items here like I've got this like clog and I've got this like little cigarette box with my laser on and like a pipe these aren't actually from a charity shop but they're like kind of personal to me items and I thought I'd go to the charity shop after therapy and take pictures and see what I can find there because I really think that there is so much beauty in things that other people throw away so we're gonna go and we're gonna get inspo at the charity shop for a jumper based on charity shops from a jumper that's bought from a charity shop from yarn that is second hand and dye that is left over so this is very exciting I'm feeling like the vibes are flowing here I'm gonna see if I've got any I know it does dye wool because this is like merino wool um it'll obviously dye slightly differently on the actual jumper because it's a different type of wool like this is a lot smoother and um has been processed a lot more than the other wool so I'm going to have to just kind of wing it when it comes down to the real thing I also just thought I would show you some of the color inspiration um I picked up this Yo Kusama book in a charity shop at the weekend and I found some really lovely images because I, I knew I already wanted to work with the pink dye that I had because that would be a really interesting way of like rejuvenating the jumper that I've not seen before. But then I also was looking through here and there's some really lovely like blue and reddy pink and obviously I've already got the blue yarn as well. Yeah, I just thought that these were really nice colour stories together. And I thought a nice amount of contrast, but also kind of complementary. So that's my colour inspo. And obviously, when you're trying to work sustainably, you need to be inspired by what you already have. So I already have the pink, I already have the blue, I already have the bright green if I want to add that. So yeah, it's really important to take that into consideration rather than just being like, oh, I want to make a yellow jumper, but not having any yellow. Your materials are what come first and then you can get inspired by that rather than the other way around, rather than, oh, I'm inspired by this, so therefore it's yellow. I'm inspired by the color, then comes the inspiration to back that up. And then it's kind of a weird way of working because in design school you're taught, oh, I'm inspired by the, the topic and then I'm inspired by an artist and then I'm inspired to do my own thing, blah, 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 blah. Like that's the order, but 
when you're trying to work sustainably you kind of have to be inspired by the materials first and then relate it back to an artist and then kind of like it, it ends up going like a z g rather than a b c like <laughs> it's a bit confusing <laughs> but yeah that's just how i'm working on this project i work differently on all of them though <laughs> Eventually, um, embroider it and dye it. The pink will be the dye, so I'll work with a lighter colour here and a darker colour here. And the blue will be embroidery. I have a lot of embroidery to do. But it's based on this cigarette box, which is from my grandma's house. My grandma is Malaysian, so I think it's nice to use objects like this that I've saved that would end up in a charity shop if I'd not saved them. So I'm just walking into town, it's such a nice day, it's crazy, I can't believe it's September and I'm going to go to the charity shops and I'm going to photograph the pieces that I'm interested in, like to sketch from, I'm hoping to look for a lot of like home stuff, I don't think I'm going to vlog that much when I'm in there, vlog, video, record, I don't know, this isn't really a vlog is it, because it's kind of awkward, like I'm going to have a mask on, like I don't really want to make people feel weird as well and I don't want to feel weird myself. Maybe one day I'll get used to it but right now it's not happening. I will catch up with you when I get home and I'll show you. I might buy a couple of bits but hopefully not too much because I'm trying to keep the cost down. So I just got back from the charity shops. I got loads of nice little pictures I kind of focused in on floral patterns that were on kind of the crockery and china that I thought were really interesting and then I've taken quite a few pictures of like the kids sections because there were some like very funny looking teddies in there and stuff like that so I thought it'd be cool to incorporate them as well. So I'm going to try and get all of that sketched up now. I did get this lampshade which I'm going to DIY at some point which will probably be in a completely different video but just thought I'd add a little teaser in there. Okay, so I've just done, some of them aren't very good and they're kind of like space fillers, but I've just done these really quick sketches for the jumper and I'm going to take pictures of them now and put them into Photoshop and place them where I think they should go. Hey, it's like 7.30 or 8 now, like I'm so tired. Um, basically, I've planned out the placement of all the illustrations for the jumper tomorrow. So what I need to do tomorrow morning is I need to do like a test swatch of the embroidery and dye together and see what happens. But right now I am so tired, but I've just had a coffee, which was a mistake because it's really late. So I think I'm gonna really struggle to sleep tonight. I've set myself a bloody ambitious task here of doing it in two days. I don't even know if it's doable, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try my best. It might end up being secondhand September and October. Yeah, I'm going to try and like come down from my caffeine high now and I will catch up with you tomorrow morning. Welcome to day two of secondhand September. I am feeling apprehensive about the amount of work I have to do. Yeah, I just, I think I didn't realise quite how much work I was going to have until I like drew it up last night. I'm like, this is quite a big surface area, front and back, to, to embroider in two days, let alone then die. But I'm gonna try. We can only do what we try to do. So, this morning, I need to do a test piece. Dying in a short time frame, probably not a good idea, but here we are, apparently. <laughs> so, this is my huge box of scraps that I've saved from projects that 
I'm not using anymore and are ready to be dismantled into like spare yarn. So like I keep random ends because I've got other projects in mind for those. And I keep like swatches like this that I'm not gonna use. So I need to find a swatch that's made of wool that I can use to emulate the techniques that I'm gonna use on the jumper. The thing is I have this, but it's just so huge. Like I don't need it to be this big and I don't wanna waste more material and I don't wanna cut it if I don't need to as well. I have this, which is like pretty close to what the wool actually is to be honest. So I've just given this a quick steam and it's these parts that I want to work with, these whiter bands. This one is slightly different, so these two top ones. This was just a stripe test. Um, but they're wool, which is the same as the jumper, so therefore it'll dye up similarly. And it's a very similar colour as well. This is the yarn I'm going to be using to embroider. I literally got this on Instagram. Someone was selling yarn and I just DM'd them and was like, yes, I will buy this. So this is second hand as well. I've got some scissors and then I just need a darning needle. This one will do. So it's just like a blunt needle. So I've literally just embroidered like a squiggle so I can see what it'll look like in more open areas and more densely covered areas as well. So now what I need to do is figure out how I'm gonna paint the dye on. Cause if I'm painting the jumper front and back, then it would be really helpful if I could like hang it while I'm painting it and then I can do both sides at the same time and then wash it and then it'll be like one process. So I need to figure out if it's possible for me to hang it and for the dye to not like run the whole way down. I think what I might do to test that is just cut this piece in half down here and then embroider this piece and have this piece flat and this piece hanging and then we can compare what they'll actually look like and what the difference will be okay so in my bathroom i've got this piece which i'm gonna hang and then i've got this piece that i'm going to lay flat while it's dying and i have an old paintbrush i have a pot to mix my dye in i'm using this powder acid dye I've used it before. I'm not too sure about the measurements. It does say on the side, so I'm gonna try and figure it out. And I also have this, which is just a little spoon. <laughs> the dye says, pre-wash the fiber, which I'm not gonna do because if it's wet, then the dye is more likely to spread a lot. Use about two gallons of water for one pound of fiber. I have no idea. I have no idea how <laughs> much to do. Okay, so let's just start adding tiny bits to begin with. This measurement is a tablespoon. So I'm just gonna add the tiniest bit. It's literally that much dye. And then I'm gonna add the hot water, but I'm just gonna add like a splash, like, literally like that. So I'm just going to stir that together with my paintbrush. This looks a little bit weak to me, but maybe if I just test a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. So can you see that's quite weak? So I probably want to add more dye powder. It's too much. I'm literally going to just paint the dye onto here as if I was doing like a watercolour or whatever. Okay, so it's, it, it is moving quite a lot. It's spreading quite a bit. So that is good to know for later on. And then let's do the one that's being hung. So that currently looks like this. And then I'm gonna leave it to hang and see if the dye ends up concentrating at the bottom which won't necessarily be a bad thing. I just want to see what it's going to look like. So I'll catch up with you in 30 minutes and show you the result. I'm hoping it all works and we love how it looks and all that jazz. In the meantime, I'm going to start embroidering, I think. Okay, I'm back in the bathroom. I mean, 
let's give it a rinse. The one that's been hung up, I think has actually moved slightly. I think it's gone down, but I don't think it's that bad. Let's give it a wash and see how it comes out. I'm just washing it with room temperature water. I don't want it to be hot or cold. I mean, I've just washed it out. It's pretty good. This is the one that was hung up. So you can see it's kind of bled underneath. I don't think it's that bad though. Yeah, I think it's gonna, I think it's great. I think it's definitely gonna work. So I'm gonna leave them to dry and I'm gonna go and get on with the embroidery, so. It's all happening. Oh, also this plant is dying. Does anybody know why? Help me. <laughs> so while I was waiting for um, the dye to set or infuse, I don't know what to call it. Um, I started with some of the embroidery on here. So I'm gonna do the neck like this. So it'll be like a stripy neck trim. I thought that would look super cute all the way around and same on the cuffs as well you know give myself lots of work to do and then i've started doing the rabbit as well on this sleeve so yeah i just need to crack on now basically so i am assuming what follows will be a huge time lapse <laughs> in the living room. I've been working on this for like four hours and I have that and that. I feel like this project is is a lot more intense than I thought it was going to be. So it's after lunch now. I've just sat down in the living room because I'm going to do some embroidering on the sofa tonight and watch Keeping Up With The Kardashians because that is motivating me. I'm just kind of focusing on like the trims today and then I'll do more of the details tomorrow, I think. But yeah, looking good so far, I think. It really is making a difference. Hey, little lady. So it's really late. I stopped working like an hour ago. I've just been sat watching TikToks to unwind. I made progress, but not as much as I thought I would. Tomorrow's gonna be interesting. I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed by the amount of work I have to do. I'll catch up with you in the morning. Hopefully I'll be feeling less tired and more motivated. I'm literally gonna sit on the sofa all day tomorrow and like watch films while I'm doing it. So I'm like not distracted at all, but oh, I'm so tired. I'm gonna go to sleep now. Hello. I've just woken up, it's day three. I'm gonna do it, I'm feeling motivated. I, I can do this, I can do this. Um, I'm just gonna get the bulk of all like the pictures embroidered today. That's a realistic goal, I think. Yeah, I can do that, I'm gonna be so speedy. I'm literally gonna sit on the sofa and probably watch like loads of old Disney films while I do it. This is gonna be great. It's gonna be great, everyone. <laughs> so I'm feeling so much more refreshed. I've got this cute little polo neck on and my jeans. Yeah, I feel so much better. Like, I think I just needed a big long sleep. I slept for like 10, maybe 11 hours. <laughs> I just thought I'd show you um, how I'm sewing this. So just going back through to meet the last stitch and then through the front. So back through and then estimating where the ne next stitch will be and then pulling it through. That's it. Hello. I completely forgot to um, like sign off last night, I guess. It's now day four, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's day four um, of 
my secondhand September project and you can see it's starting to look a little bit more like what we've been planning. I'll show you a close up now. So we've got a little octopus up here. You can't really see him, but I'll flip it over in a minute. A butterfly, a rabbit, um, the cigarette box with Malaya on it, some grapes from some China, a pipe and a badminton racket. But unfortunately, the back is still looking very bare. Except for this sleeve. This sleeve is completely done. Got another shift to put in today, but hopefully it'll be worth it um, eventually. I'm feeling motivated because yesterday went really well, but I am starting to get a bit tired now. And also, I'm not really sure what to do about the trims because my original plan was to do them like the neck in solid blue but i just think that's going to take too long so maybe i'll just do like certain bits of the trim in blue if it doesn't look too messy i'll probably try it on one of the sleeves and see um but yeah so goals for today are finish the rest of the hand embroidery of like the pictures and then figure out what to do with the trims this is meant to be a relaxing week of my own project i don't know why i've done this to myself I can't believe this. I'm literally sat here working and Susie's come and decided to just sit on my leg. And now she's like getting really annoyed when I'm sewing. She's like looking at me like I've done something wrong, even though she came and sat here after I'd been doing this all morning. She's the grumpiest cat. It is like 10.30 now. I've done all the picture embroidery. I just don't know what I'm going to do about the trims because tomorrow is the first day of October and this is secondhand September, like not secondhand October. So I'm just going to chill for now, for tonight. I need like an hour to watch Drag Race. I'm not going to do any more work tonight. I'm going to pick it back up tomorrow. I still got to paint it with dye. I don't know what I'm doing. Do the trims even need to be blue? I'll probably see what everyone says on my Instagram post about it tomorrow. Because if everyone thinks it's fine without, then is there any point in me, like, busting my ass tomorrow? I've, I've finished the bulk of the embroidery. I'm feeling pretty chill about it. I'm not going to worry too much about it, like, it bleeding into the weekend, even though it goes into October. I think it'll be fine. I will catch up with you in the morning, I guess. Again. I did not think this would be going on this long, but here we are. So it is day five today of my second hand September project and it is now October. <laughs> so you could say the deadline's not been met, but it's looking sick, <laughs> basically. It looks really good so far. The, all the picture embroidery is done. I obviously still need to paint the dye on, but I'm just debating whether to make these trims blue like the top like i started doing this sleeve but it just takes so long that i'm not sure if i want to spend so much time doing that i don't know maybe i could just do a section like this on each sleeve but then what about the hem i don't know i've put a poll up on instagram so hopefully people will just tell me what to do <laughs> um but yeah, so I obviously still need to paint the dye on, so I was hoping to do that today, and I was hoping to finish all the embroidery today. But if I'm going to do the hems, that's probably not realistic. And I need to do finances this morning because it's the first day of the month. Oh, feeling a bit overwhelmed. Okay, let's just crack on. Hello, it's a lot later. I ended up doing the cuff, not fully in blue, just a bit. I think it looks cool. I'm kind of in, in between about it. If I think it looks shit, I can just embroider the little white bits anyway. But yeah, I asked on Instagram and everyone was like, do it blue, do it blue. And I don't have time to do the whole thing. So this is the compromise we came up with. Yeah, so I will probably update you on progress tomorrow morning. And then hopefully dye it tomorrow. Tomorrow should be dyeing day. Do not sit on the bloody jumper. Look, she's got, she's eyeing it up. Hi, um, it is day six, I think. Um, just a quick update. 
I don't know how much I'm going to get done today because I have to go into hospital because <laughs> I stubbed my toe so badly last night that I think I might have broken it and they want me to get an x-ray so god knows <laughs> god knows when this jumper's gonna be finished but I'm taking it with me to A&E <laughs> so I'll update you when I'm back <laughs> It's the day after. I was just so knocked out from being in the hospital yesterday that I didn't record anything else. Basically, I thought I'd broken my toe, but it turns out my toe is fine. I'm not gonna get my feet out for free on the internet because I would like to be paid for that content. It's just really badly bruised. They did an x-ray, it was cool. I got to see my bones. I might insert a picture of it here because I think it's like the coolest thing I've ever seen. I don't know if I showed you this already, but I've started filling in the trims like this. I think it looks pretty cool. I was gonna do some at the hospital. I took it with me to sew, but A&E was genuinely so traumatic that I just couldn't, <laughs> I just couldn't focus on it at all. And I was just like, no, I need to just scroll on Instagram. I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's fine. And I can always just do the bottom trim today and then just paint, paint the dye. I just, I think I need to get it on, get on with it now. Like it's just taking forever and it needs to it needs to progress i'm feeling a bit feeling a bit lethargic with it because i had to take yesterday off as well so i just need to get this bottom trim sorted so i'm going to work on that today i need to go to sainsbury's first and all that kind of shit so it's probably actually going to end up being finished tomorrow but i can see the light at the end of the knitwear tunnel thank you for sticking around this far into the video i promise the end is coming it's day nine and it's the 5th of October and it's finally happening. <sighs> I'm going to paint the dye on. The embroidery's finished. Let me try and show you. So this is the front and this is the back. What a transformation. Well, it's got some more transforming to do now. This is the nerve wracking part because I can't really like undo this. Like embroidery, you can just undo it if you don't like it. Whereas dye, it's like a permanent thing. So this is the part where it could all go completely wrong. I'm still not sure on these trims, like the uppy downiness of them. I just feel like it takes away from the embroidery, but maybe once it's dyed, it'll look better. Okay, it's actually a lot later because I didn't realise that dinner was almost ready. So I went and I ate dinner. Oh God. Okay, I'm just gonna sort my hair out. Yeah, so I went and I ate dinner and now I'm back. I've made up my dye and I've just grabbed um, one of the test pieces that I used before. And I'm just gonna paint a little bit of dye on just to check it's like the right color. That looks pretty right to me. This is the new wet part. So I also have my sketchbook here so I can see where to put the pink. So I guess maybe I'll start on the back just in case with this shoe. This is so scary. Okay so I've just got a bit of dye on my paintbrush and I'm just gonna, oh, hmm, this wall is a lot more resistant to the dye than the other one which isn't ideal. I'm just kind of painting it, painting it on like this. And I'm trying to really work it in to the fibres. So this is what the clock looks like currently on the back and I'm just going to give the same treatment to literally all the other illustrations. I can't believe I'm finally doing this. This has been such a long time coming. I know nine days isn't that long to spend on a project but it's just felt like a bit of a long journey. I know this project's about transforming a secondhand garment, but I also just wanted to highlight the beauty that is in secondhand shops and charity shops as well. Like, I think so often people are like, oh, I'll just nip in and see if there's one thing, but there's so many things that you can be entertained by, be visually stimulated by in charity shops. And I just don't think they get the credit that they deserve. 
especially when the high street is so cheap now that it makes charity shops seem like the same choice as just buying new but you've got to remember why the prices on the high street are the way they are i'm so glad i kind of planned these out before because it's making my job now a lot quicker even though it is going quite slowly it's weird because i thought the fibers in this would be more absorbent because i washed it before but they're less absorbent than that piece of knitwear that i've not washed so i don't know what's going on there i feel like bob ross like i'm just like oh there's no mistakes it's just happy accidents in my jumper painting I think this is really helping to kind of bring the focus to the pictures instead of just the cable knit. Yeah, I'm really enjoying this. I don't know why other people haven't done this more. I can't believe I did this in nine days. This was meant to be a small project that I set myself as like a, oh, let's get back into making my own things again. And it's turned into like <laughs> such a lengthy thing. I just can't make things simple, but I'm really happy with what I've done, like I feel really pleased with the turnaround and with the product, like I've not seen anything like this before and that's always a really nice feeling to know that you've come up with something that's right for you, you're not just following a trend and that's exactly what I guess Secondhand September is about, like you're buying something because you like it, not because it's in a high street store that's telling you to buy it. I know it's not even September anymore, but this project was started in September, so it can definitely count for second hand September. I wish I could have got it done in time, but I just was too overambitious, wasn't I? Saying that, I have a project that I was supposed to finish in November last year, and it's going to come out this month or next month, so it's a year late <laughs> uh, to being released. Things happen when they happen. That's all you can do. Okay, so it's all painted now. I'll show it to you. So this is the front. And this is the back. I think the sleeves are my favorite part. So I'm gonna leave that to dry, just so the dye that I've just put on has time to soak in. And then I'm gonna come back and wash it. Hello, it's the 6th now, excuse the pyjamas, um, I'm just preparing for something else so I don't want to wear my proper clothes yet. So I, I dyed it last night, I think it looks great, it needs to be washed out obviously, but we're so close to being done, so I'm going to wash it now and then I'll leave it to dry. So I've just rinsed it out with water. And then I have this cashmere wool wash from the Lab Co. So I'm going to chuck a bit of that on it, give it a good scrub, and then hang it, squeeze it out, and then hang it up to dry. So I don't have anywhere to lay my mitts out flat in my house because every room is used for something all the time. Uh, that's just what living in London's like. And... This is the best way I've found to dry them flat, but not take up a load of space. So I just pop it on like that, and then it's flat and it can like drip over the edge, which is fine because I can set it up with a towel. But like the only part that's floppy is the neck, which I think is fine. So yeah, there it is. It's drying. I'll show you when it's finished. Hello. The jumper's almost dry, it's still kind of wet, but I thought I would show you because this video needs to go up today. So here it is. The pink is a lot lighter than I intended, but I think I actually don't mind that. I think it makes it look more fun. But yeah, I think it turned out so nice. This is the back. So lessons learned on this project. <laughs> where maybe next time do something simpler <laughs> and if it takes a long time then just accept that it's going to take a long time instead of stressing about it because I definitely did. I was really concerned with the fact that it's obviously a secondhand September project and it's now October. I just needed to accept it that it wasn't going to take the amount of time that I 
thought it was going to and everyone wanted to see the finished thing anyway regardless of the fact that it wasn't in September. Yes, lesson number two was despite the fact that fibres can look the same and also be made of the same thing they can react completely differently when you put dye on them. So do a mini mini test patch on the actual real thing maybe like on the inside of the cuff or something next time rather than like a different but similar piece of knit. It needs to be on the actual final thing. And then lesson number three is definitely you can make something that is really beautiful with secondhand materials. All you need is a little bit of time and some creative thought. Thank you so much if you are still here at the end of this really long video. Um, I really appreciate it. And thank you so much to everyone for all the, the really nice feedback on the jumper on Instagram. And yeah, please subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this or follow my Instagram, which will be below. Thank you so much.